mazel, the Hebrew word for luck or fortune. Uh, describes um, an access, an openness to the higher parts of our soul, which we're not ordinarily in touch with. So uh, literally the word mazal is related to the word, to the word that means to drip, a trickle down effect. Usually we're in touch only with three parts of our soul, nefesh, ruach, and neshama. The other two parts of the soul, chaya and yechida, are, are not really available to us uh, consciously. It affects us on some level that we may not even know about. It's always affecting us, but there's nothing we can do to get closer, to get more. Certain occasions open up those gates and allow us greater access. Like for example, your birthday. On your birthday, you have greater access to all of your neshama than you do on a regular day. Because on your birthday, that's when all parts of the neshama were given to you. And so it's in a sense repeated every year on your birthday, you are once again given your neshama and that includes the two parts that are a little elusive. Uh, there, are, there are dramatic moments where because of the intensity of the experience, you become sensitive to the higher parts of your neshama. Like when you're faced with a crisis and you can do superhuman things, that comes from the higher parts of the neshama. So under certain conditions, you surprise yourself and you do something magnificent, literally superhuman. And you, you don't know how to explain it. How did I do that? This is not me. But under those circumstances, you, you were given access, you gained access to the two parts of your soul that are superhuman. The higher part of you. Now, one of the things that opens you up to a more limitless part of your neshama is when you do something to break your own limits. Because when you get into a habit, when you're living a habit, you don't really leave room for these limitless energies to enter. When you change location, you uproot and you move to a new location, you have removed a certain restrictive element. Like when God said to Avram, leave your birthplace, your father's home, and your country, and come to the place that I will show you. That opened up Avram to a godliness that his limited existence, although it was a very moral and, and uh, holy existence, but it was limited to the place, to the habits, to the familiarity. By leaving all of that, he opened himself up to a greater, to a greater influence, and that's called his mazel. <clears throat> now, sometimes you you gain access to the fourth level of the soul which is Chaya, but not necessarily to the fifth level. And sometimes you get opened up even to the fifth level. So Mazal means 
what can open you up to the two parts of your soul that you don't otherwise ordinarily have access to? So it is not, it's not a random occurrence. It's not like, oh, good luck. You suddenly had some good luck. And it's not coming out of nowhere. It's the better part of you, the higher part of you that cannot be accessed through logic, through even the best mitzvahs you do, because it's all limited. You open yourself only when you can leave all restrictions, when you free yourself of all limitations. And that may be what the Rebbe Marash meant when he said, Why try to work your way through the limited functions of the human condition when you know there is a, uh, there's a higher level that sometimes you can get a glimpse of and you can get a little trickle down effect. So why try and work and strive in the lower level when you can just go to the higher level to begin with? But what does that mean to go to a higher level? It means let go of your limits. Open yourself up to greater possibilities than your personality and your imagination allow. So I don't know if we would call that a greater amount of faith or a greater leap of faith or true trust in God where you're willing to try things that you reasonably or rationally know you're not capable of. Like, for example, going on shlichus. Now it seems quite natural because we've seen it work. But in the early years, I mean, talk about changing location. It's not like you're moving from one neighborhood to another. You're leaving behind everything you're familiar with. That opens you up to a lot of mazel. And we can see what it does to people. The shluchim are the ones who gain the most. So that would be the, um, the effect that, that we encourage when we say mazel tov to somebody. On those occasions where they can have access to the higher parts of their soul, we bless them with that access. Mazal tov, um, get in touch with your higher part. Whether it's your birthday, your anniversary, your wedding day. Mazal tov, get your good mazal. Get that trickle down effect from your neshama that uh, you don't ordinarily experience. Even, even the thought of getting married, the willingness to be married, means the willingness to leave everything familiar and uh, go into an adventure that you cannot predict the outcome, you don't know what's going to be, who it's going to be, and yet you're open to it. That increases your mazel. I think the, the health people say that um, there, there are certain problems, illnesses, that come from stagnation. And the cure is simply make a change. Make a dramatic change in your lifestyle or in your location or something, and, and, you will, and you will be healthy, you will heal. That means open yourself up to that higher muzzle 
and you'll be okay. But what it takes is a dramatic shift, a dramatic change. Let go of the limits. Like people who are told that their prognosis is not good. And that kind of sparks a rebellion in them. And suddenly they are determined to overcome everything. That opens them up to a greater muzzle and they succeed. So some will say, well, that's their, uh, their uh, will to live is so strong. That everybody's will to live is strong. But some people don't, don't even think of making changes when they're not well. On the contrary, they, they, they dig in to their comfort zone even more because now they're frightened, now they're timid, now they're cautious. So they hang on to the comfort zone more than before. That's not helpful. Those who say, okay, then I'm going to change, I'm going to do whatever it takes, all bets are off, I will give up everything, no more limits, I'll be going for it. That openness, that shedding of, of the restrictions, that brings a greater muzzle. So every time we do something that kind of shakes our comfort zones, we open ourselves up to a greater muzzle. And certainly getting married is a strong form of abandoning your comfort zone. Having a child. So when a child is born, we say mazel tov, to the parents, not to the child. Because of the, um, the parents, new approach or new access to life, a higher life. If you enjoyed this conversation or this topic and you're looking for more information or you want to hear it again from another angle, there is a way to do that. And that is in this book. It's all there. Order it from Amazon. You can read it, reread it and share it. I want to invite you to join us as VIPs, partners in our work, and join us also for uh, a personal chat with other members of the VIP club. We talk about many things. There's an opportunity to ask, to respond, to make a comment, to meet the other supporters. And together, we can really make a difference in Jewish life and in life in general. So join us. It's goodtoknow.org. Log in, call, make contact, and join us with the VIPs.